Well, good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another video review, the second one this week. Um, this time we're in Greece, and we're looking at Corfu, Kakira International, Ionis Kapodistias. Probably didn't say that very correctly. The island of Corfu in Greece, Lima Golf Kilo Romeo. This is the payware version by Fly Tampa, um, in many cases, and certainly in mine, one of the developers to be measured against. This is version 1.01. Um, Fly Tampa did release a small update. As far as I can see, it's currently available for the PC version only at the moment. The download is comes in at 2 gigabytes, and she installs at just over 6 gigs. Now there are two folders, the island and the airport, that go side by side. In total, they're just over 6 gigabytes in a download. Currently available from both SimMarket and FlyTampa.org. I'll give you the prices, SimMarket first. If you buy it from SimMarket, currently it'll cost you €23.99, which equates to roughly $24.63 US, or £20.08 UK. And those prices include VAT. US and UK prices are estimates. Obviously the VAT and tax may vary depending on which country you're in when you make your purchase. If you buy it from flytampa.org directly from them, uh, they use BMT Micro as a, a pay option. It'll cost you uh, roughly €19.47 or $19.99 US or around £16.29 UK. Now the UK and Euro prices from Plytampa are estimates and they do not include VAT and tax. So you'll have to add those up. Uh, the price is 1999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999
between Fraport, AG, or RG as the Germans say, Copazurus Group and the State Privatisation Fund, Hellenic Republic Asset Development. According to the agreement, the joint venture will operate the 14 airports, including Corfu, for 40 years as of the 11th of April 2017. Traffic going through the airport, as of 2018, the airport handled over 3.3 million passengers and at the time the airport was used by over 50 different airlines. Obviously Covid hit in 2020, which dropped the numbers quite a lot, but things are beginning to recover and this airport and this area is still a very highly sought after passenger vacation destination. So I've turned the light down, it's just after quarter past eight in the evening local time. I've had to turn the light down quite low because you can see the runway lights are excellent but the lead-in lights are quite a bit darker. I don't know if that's by design, I suspect it is. But anyway, here you can see the runway in all its glory. So, uh, Corfu operates a single runway, runway 1634, which measures 7785 feet or 2373 meters in length and it's made from asphalt. The actual field elevation is only 6 feet or 2 meters. Now runway 34, which is the one we're looking at right now, is often the preferred landing runway and features medium intensity airfield lighting system, precision approach path indicators on both sides of the runway. You also have runway end identifier lighting system as well. This runway has an RMP approach and it has up to 7 VOR approach options. There's no ILS for this runway. Um, Corfu is actually quite um, a challenging approach for um, most pilots, um, especially when the weather gets a little bit iffy. But uh, yeah, our, the RNAV approach into runway 34 is the preferred landing, um, obviously subject to weather conditions. On the other end, so runway 16, which we're looking at now, features medium intensity runway lighting system and the runway end identifier lights. Now for options, landing options here you have obviously you've got the pappies on either side of the runway which help and the runway is reasonably well lit. There's also quite a large display threshold here. Now for landing you only have VORB and locator A approach options available for this runway. So as far as I understand it there are visual approach options into the runway and occasionally it's used but predominantly runway 34 is used. So that's how that does it for runways. Let's go back into the daytime and have a close look at what flight dampers provided for us in this product. So here we are on the west side of the northern part of the airport. We're actually on the light aircraft apron, which you can see to the right there. I just thought it'd be a good place to start so you can see the road that uh, quite, is quite a prominent feature of the airport. It goes past the end of runway 16. And here you can see traffic, um, basic buildings that have been um, put in here. I thought we would start and have a low pass around the perimeter here and across the um, apron on the other side and work our way around the airport before we start going up close. So as you can see, everything looks really quite nice. There's some cars there on the left and the buildings are beautifully done. They're weathered as we would expect go down a little lower. Foliage looks good. I mean they've gone to a lot of work here. Um, it's, I shouldn't really say we expect it. As I said you know Fly Tamper is one of those developers that everybody else seems to judge them by. But um, you just look at the work here. So here we're crossing the threshold of the displaced threshold of runway 16 and heading down past the road. Beautiful car models. A uh, really nice representation of buildings. There's the Hertz dealership. Now let's turn on to the apron itself. Now some lovely weathering on the apron there. You can even see, look, they've even got chocks positioned at various places. We have wigwags going on the um, entrances to the runway and exits in the runway there. Again, nice buildings, beautifully weathered. Excellent markings on the ramp. I mean, this just looks great, doesn't it? The signage is good. The models look wonderful. Some nice vehicles and coaches and clutter. 
Um, no vehicles going on to the runway, which is another wonderful thing, really nice plus. So we continue um, heading south along the ramp. I've just changed the view here so you can see the buildings and look at the weathering on the control tower and stuff there. And it's beautiful. Loads of buses and, and different clutter. I love the concrete. Look at the way it's been done with the cracks that you'd get. Because obviously we've got a hot country here in the summer it gets really hot. Lovely building, beautifully done. Really, really nice signage on the roads as I say you can even see look they've even got chocks very very nice indeed so let's head out towards the runway towards the threshold of runway 34 and have a look at what's going on here lovely pond here we cross the runway to the other side as you can see there wonderful tire marks on the runway runway looks well used And here you can see it's just beautifully modelled, the terrain, nothing's been left to chance. So we're going to go across and have a look at these buildings here because there's some nice work that's been done over here. There's also a boat harbour there that you can see. beautifully done the buildings are just lovely it all looks very very pleasant nice big swimming pool there well that looks great there's even people down there I believe so there you are quick look on the terrace here as you can see people sitting there um, this is beautifully done absolutely stunning and there we are looking from the other side there you can see more people sitting out enjoying the sunshine what a lovely place to sit and have a beer and watch the aircraft land beautiful so we continue our tour here just over this little boat harbour as you can see it's, it's really nicely done and you've got little yachts and things out in a harbour there are cruise ships that actually move along in a wake um, with um, smoke coming out of the funnels. We'll look at those in a minute. But as you can see here, nothing has been left to chance. So much work has been done. I mean, look at that. Beautiful. The rockery is, is stunning, they've done a nice job on that, let's bring up a little higher. So as you can see there's more bits and pieces that have been done here as well. So let's track in back in towards the airport here, there's a nice view of the items we looked at on the right there. There's the walking bridge over the boat harbour. Here we're coming in over runway 34. This is the view you'll get during the daytime when you make your landing approach. Pappy's either side, just like on the other one. So this time we'll cross over the airport terminal area and head out towards the bay. As you can see, you've got cars going down the road. And the whole thing is really, really nicely done here. Beautiful building, stunning scenery. Nice to take the helicopter out and have a look round, which I actually have done before, but maybe I'll do a video of it. Uh, lots of little ships and boats and bits and pieces lying around and buildings I mean lots of attention been paid to these buildings the whole ambience of the place is excellent there's a church spire over there to the left
This, I believe, is an old fort. <clears throat> but again, nothing left to chance. Look at the rockery. It's been beautifully crafted. Absolutely stunning. So looking at it from the other direction as we come away from it there. There's a bo another boat harbour to the right with yachts and things in it. Just beautiful. So we cruise slowly into the main Corfu port here. Now you can see there's a ship coming out already under, under its own power and it has a wake. So again, a beautiful attention to detail. Everything is just stunning. Here you can see the ship coming out. We'll just go pass over it. There's the wake and you can hear the sound of it as well. And there you go, we've just passed right through the, the plume. But as you can see, the detail is amazing. They've just really done a job here. Which is exactly why we tend to think of Fly Tampa as one of the top developers. Hours of work must have gone into this. And yet they're only charging $20 US for it. Or 24 euros, 25 euros off the market which includes tax and that's a really really good price for what you're getting here so we head back towards the airport just passing over the town here with the harbour to the left um, I have to say there is more than one cruise ship that goes animated so they've done wonderful wonderful job there's the uh, church spire And here we are going down. This is the view you'd get going down runway 16. There's the famous road that everybody sees in the videos. To the right is the light aircraft apron. It's really, really nice. So let's go land side of the terminals now and have a look and see what we've got here. So again, here's just a good idea of the detail of some of these buildings. Everything down to the balcony here. And look at the roof weathering. And these, let's take a close look. So we're fairly light up close. And the resolution of those of that picture is good enough to give it a decent illusion. But you see everything right down to the little sign has been done. Just the attention to detail in this project is wonderful. Uh, just another look at some landside buildings there. Again, here we are, signs in Greek and in English. The entry barriers, the weathering on the buildings is just amazing. Beautifully done. So let's continue our landside tour where we're having a look at the uh, buildings and the structures landside. Coaches there. More signage. Stunning, absolutely stunning. So you can see the, um, I mean, look at the pipework. And even those tankers, the models are stunning. I haven't seen any misplaced foliage at all. All looks really good. There you've got vehicles and stuff down there, baggage dollies, AKE containers car park on the little roof there plenty of cars and many of them are very very different so no model repetition which is stunning so here we come past the land side part of the terminal where the coach parks we'll come back and have a close look at the terminal in a minute now if I rem remember correctly I spoke to Fly Tampa about this there is no internal development of the terminals because you can't see but actually what they've done 
is that when you get up close to the terminal outside from landside you can see what looks like activity inside but it's an illusion. So rather than develop the inside of the terminal they've opted to create the illusion of it all being um, all going on. So let's go land side of the terminal now and have a look. As you can see the signage is fantastic and the structure is beautifully done. So let's stop here. So there, if we look in through the glass you can see the inside of the terminal appears to have been developed but if we attempt to go inside that's what happens. So they've created the illusion of the internal development being done um, which is, looks real to all intents and purposes. We'll have a look at it from airside in a minute which I think is a lovely effect. So a quick look in that direction there you can see the signage on the outside of the building and they've got the airport name in Greek along here along with the sign and as you can see here when we're looking in here you can see the inside um, which looks as though it's in development. It's a very, as you say, I have to, it's a very nice illusion. I can't wait to see this in the darkness hours. Um, and it's a great way of getting the exact effect that you want without having to develop the inside of the building. Um, and as I said, I spoke to Fly Temper about this, and this is by design. So here we've got a nice little Mercedes coming down the road. And that's probably one of the nicest car animations I've seen. Not only is the model good, but it tracks properly. So continue our landside tour and we look at the buses. The buses are fantastic. Again, we've got this car coming towards us. Very nicely done. And there you can see somebody walking past. There's a nice illusion there. continue along the landside road. I mean this whole thing looks great doesn't it? What a, a lovely project. The cars are tracking properly, they all look really good. So let's just stop here for a moment and take stock. There's a look back and you can see um, signage, even down to the signage is, is excellent. Lovely, beautiful palm trees. Telephone on the outside of the building there. Nothing left to chance. Beautiful detail. Let's go have a look at the control tower. So first looking from the outside, again, stunning, absolutely stunning weathering on the concrete there. Looks beautiful. And we can see from the outside that there is some kind of internal development. Let's pop inside. And there you are monitoring screens, chairs and stuff looks really good and also the view out through the windows looks good and um, obviously they haven't cleaned the windows for a while this is a nice effect as an observation the only thing that's missing again is people in here and just a look out across the ramp there you can see vehicles going in and out and it's just a really nice view so that's the control tower. We're just looking across the um, airside landside boundary bit here. This is a really good example of how to do create stunning scenery. Look at the weathering on this building. The way this building has been created is absolutely is nothing short of excellent. You've got all the detail you need, the weathering, the air conditioning units. Um, and then we go down here, look, and you've got your AKE containers, coaches, you've even got a gate gourmet vehicle there some baggage dollies, various cars, none of them are exactly the same which is good and possibly the first time I've seen it, motorcycles in the motorcycle park. Don't think I've seen a motorcycle in a scenery before. And again continue looking here you've got so much detail this whole place looks real. Just the weathering and the way it's been done makes it look really real. And I'm just looking the other way slightly, a landside car park there, look at the coach. It's just great. It's at the right speed as well. It's not herring down the road. There's so much about this 
project that is excellent. So here's the main terminal building, one of them here from Airside. What I want to do is go up close and have a look and see what we can see from the outside and see whether we get the same effect. So there we go, looking in through one of the glass windows there you can see the internal development of the building. Um, and it's <laughs> looking at this, it's hard to say that it actually hasn't been developed inside. It's only if you attempt to go in. In fact, we had something there, didn't we? Let's go down and see if we can... Right, okay, so here's the upper level. And again, you can see bits and pieces inside. It's just, it's very nicely done. It really took, but to be honest, it's a real pity we can't go in. But for a moment there, I saw moving people. Now there we are. On the lower level, you've got people inside the terminal milling about. So I'm not sure what the, um, I'm not really sure what the thought process is behind this, where you develop the inside of the terminal in the way that you can see it here, but you can't actually go in. Like I said, I think it's possibly to do with um, giving you the illusion that you really want to see and make it believable, but without having to put in the extra work needed to develop the inside of the terminal. I think that must be part of the reason. Um, maybe somebody from Fly Tampa will comment on this video after watching it and um, enlighten us a little further, but that looks really good. So there we are looking in the other direction and you can see all these bits and pieces going on inside. There's a baggage carousel and as I say if we attempt to go in that's what happens. So all by design apparently according to Coup to Fly Tampa. But it looks good. To be honest it works. And um, again, as a pilot, when you pull up and park your aircraft, this is the view you're going to get to see in front of you when you look out the window of your flight deck. Um, and to be honest, can't wait to see what this looks like at the low light when we turn the lights down. So there's an overview of the ramp from a higher level. Let's turn the lights down to dusk and have a look at the lighting on the main ramp area here. Okay, it's 10 to 8 in the evening local time. Remember, this is summer. We're in August 2022. Um, and um, it's really, really nice. From what I can see here, all the basics are done. The lighting is quite subtle. We'll get up close to various things and start having a look at them. So first things first, let's have a look at the signage around the, the field here. Um, okay, I can't see any green centerline lights, but that's not a problem. At the moment, at this time of the day, with the sun going down, you can still see the apron yellow taxiway lines. Um, you can see the blue airfield edge lights really excellently. They're beautifully done. And um, here's a, one of the um, ground signs, and here you can see also that not, not only has it been done really, really nicely, there's a slight bit of weathering around it as well, but also it reflects into the glass, into the grass which is excellent. Let's get a bit closer and look at that. I mean that is um, uh, how a, uh, an airport sign should be done. Here you can see the weathering slightly around the edge of the light um, and again it's set into the grass and here's the reflection. It's beautifully done. So here's a close-up look at the runway entry exit signs here for, for, for the main runway. Here you've got a close-up of the blue airfield edge light. Looks really good. And again, the sign, entry sign to the runway and the wigwags. I mean, all of this, not only does it look nearly perfect, but it's so good. You can even see the rivets here. Um, and the concrete and the paint and the way this has all been painted in. This is about the best you can get. This is why we like these kind of developers, because they do such an amazing job. So as we track towards the terminal here, as you can see, the lighting is perfectly adequate, provided by those poles, not on a Sobo globe in sight. And here we're getting close to the building, with plenty of light for you to taxi in and park up. And this is where it all happens. Look at this. So there we go, we're looking through the windows, the lighting inside the terminal, everything down to, right down to the roof lighting. All of this is beautifully modelled. 
Now, I'm sitting here thinking and wondering if, if this has actually been modelled um, and the option to go inside and have a look has just been denied to us or whether this is some kind of design technique and illusion that allows us to think it's been modelled when actually it hasn't. Because again, if I attempt to go inside we get bumped up to the roof. So it's a bit weird. I've not encountered it before, but um, I'm not going to um, criticise it because it works. You can you get the illusion that you need. Everything looks real. It's just that from you can't. You're actually denied entry into the inside, which suggests that it actually hasn't been done, and this is some kind of special technique. Now I don't expect Fly Tamper to give away their secrets in my video or anyone else's, but um, what I do expect is it for, for to work, and indeed it does. I mean that is really wonderful, it's great, um, I mean look at the weathering down here, look how real this looks, even the stairways inside here, the lighting is very very subtle, very nicely done. So we have a little track down the airside road here, just to get an idea of what the lighting looks like generally, and you can see, I mean it's, it's beautiful, it is uh, uh, just beautiful. even the subtle lighting on these little signs here as well um, and I'm looking around and I can't see any other um, any uh, Sobo globes or any sort of artificial lighting at all it's all been provided by the lights that exist um, and it looks great again we look towards the terminal and you can see inside you've got this wonderful illusion everything works I'm sitting here thinking how I'd really love to be able to see whether we can go inside and whether this is developed or whether this is some kind of illusionary technique. But, um, <laughs> Jesus, you know, it works. It, it's great. We continue our tour. And as you can see, I mean, it's just the, the, the lighting is wonderful. So there, look, everything down, even down to the baggage carousels there that you can see. You can see inside the terminal, lighting's very subtle. All looks really, really nice. And look at the weathering on the control tower building. Absolutely beautiful. And the vehicles look great. So while we're here, we'll have a look at the control tower. You can see there's some lighting, not an awful lot. It's quite subtle. Note the um, red lights on the roofs here, which is what you should see in most air many airport buildings over a certain height. And here we are inside the control tower, and you can see this beautiful, subtle lighting provided by this roof light here. It just looks wonderful. And there's a view looking back towards the runway to the airside ramp from within the control tower. Oh, it's just stunning. Subtle lighting is wonderful here. Again, the roads are great. There, look, you've got the, even the bus and everything has lights on them. Vehicle traffic is lit. Um, okay, we've got one or two Sobo globes here. But um, it, again, in this situation, they work. So I'm no, no complaint at all. I did want to have a look at these bikes, as you can see. These are the first time, it's the first time I've seen bikes parked up in a scenery at all. And uh, very nicely modelled. Not perfect, but they're pretty damn close. Okay, quick tour down the land side part of the terminal. Really wanted to see this in a low light. And this is the effect we get. It's beautifully done. And you can see slow down a bit now there you can see the land side part of the inside of the terminal has the same sort of development that we see from air side but again we can't go in we're denied entry but um, illusion or not it looks great it, it works it's just um, amazing just really really great and the lighting is just lovely. So here we get to the other part of the terminal. The lighting's a little bit more developed. But it's really well done. 
some of the best car models and tracking I've seen in a scenery for some time. Now just coming up to this end of the runway, obviously while we're here we cannot um, miss the chance to have a look at this development, see what it looks like at the, in the uh, low light hours. And again, we're not disappointed to look at the way the buildings are done, even the swimming pool has lighting in it, which is great. This is lovely, the way this has been done. So looking at uh, the seating area here, this end of the runway, beautiful lighting, very, very nice, very subtle. I mean, that is beautifully done. It looks great in the dusk hours. And again, you have this illusion here of the inside of the building um, because of the way this has been done. It's, just, it's lovely, it really is nice. And you can see that also, even from this distance, partially on these buildings here. And here you can see the boat harbour has pretty similar treatment. I mean, that is just beautiful. You see, you've got the lights here providing the light, no Sobo globes. Um, here you've got, uh, it's just, just a lovely view. Look at the, um, the reflections on the water, all the cars. And again, we've got people sitting here enjoying a nice evening, probably having to have a beer or three, and they get to see all the landings. What a place to be. And a quick shot there looking down to what's left of the harbour. I actually see somebody walking around here, look. And you've got these flags. Let's go have a quick look. Yeah, people out for a swim. <laughs> and all of those flags. Doesn't that look amazing? And there's a nice shot looking back to that area of the boat harbour and the little building there that's been nicely lit, that church. So for me that looks pretty stunning. I mean that looks great. There you can even see the Dedini Ocean, the swimming pool and if I'm not mistaken you've even got people walking around here. I'm sorry but this could go on for hours but um, I'm going to leave for some bits and pieces for you guys to explore and discover yourselves. I thought I'd get a nice close-up shot of this. I mean, isn't that been done nicely? So there you've got a beautiful shot there of the ship just cruising away towards the east into the sunset. And you've got a great view there of Corfu Town all lit up in the evening. And the lighting just absolutely stunning. I can't really say it enough. It's just done a wonderful job here. So there's a high level shot of the airport there with Corfu in the, in the, in the foreground and the harbour there. We've just seen the uh, one of the ships cruising away. Just really looks great. Let's turn the light down to night time now. Okay, just after five past ten in the evening local time and as you can see, it's a really, really nice view. There's the cruise ship going away in the distance and the moon reflecting on the water there on the boat harbour to the left. So let's have a cruise over some of the signage here by the taxiways, go across the runway and have a look at the terminal quickly while we've um, got it in night time. As you can see the signage is great and I love the reflections. So much detail has gone into this to make sure that it looks great. This is probably one of the best nighttime sceneries I've seen for a while. Oh, the vehicle there just shut its lights off, so it's obviously parked up. But you can see the glow from each of the blue airfield edge lights, which is great. There's a the helicopter pad. I've forgotten where the helicopter pad is. You have to come in in one direction because of that light pole, which is a pity. But something I might try at some point. So here we're just going to tour across the ramp. Get a bit closer to the terminal. I mean, look at that. That looks great. 
it's just a lovely nighttime view. Very nice indeed, really, really well done. And you've even got there down at the bottom here, look, you can see oil or water stains on the on the road. As I've said, even the road markings are crystal clear. And there you can see inside the terminal everything is going on as it should be. come round to land side very quickly. And again, you've got the same beautiful effect here. Land side, just awesome coaches look great. No expense has been spared in terms of detail here. They've gone to town on everything. They've made sure that everything is properly detailed, weathered um, and, and fits right. It's hard to find the right description but it looks so good. The modelling standard is excellent. It's just impress really impressive. There's no getting away from it. And this is why Fly Tampa is so well known and why so many people quote them. Don't misunderstand me, there are some fantastic developers out there and they're doing a great job. And some of some there are some amazing sceneries. But standards like this are the ones to, to aim for. I mean the lighting here is so subtle and it really does the job. I mean, that looks fantastic, does it not? It looks just so impressive. And the workmanship continues when you get down to the ramp over the runways and taxiways. And the signage here, the glowing of the, um, the blue lights, it's just, just really impressive. So here we are onto the main runway. And you can see, okay, no center line lighting on the runway, but the runway is clearly delineated. So you'll be relying on your nose gear, um, the light on your nose gear to light up the runway as you approach. But as you can see, that looks really impressive. So let's turn the lighting up to dawn. Okay, just before 6 a.m. local time, and as you can see, the sun's peeking over the hills there and you get this beautiful sunrise glow on the buildings. All the lights have pretty much gone out. There we are looking down the runway 16 towards the other end. Terminals on the left. Here's the VOR station just on the right side of the runway. And here's a look a little bit further back on runway 16. Here's the huge displaced threshold that they've got. Here's the road that goes round the end of the runway. And here's the uh, light aircraft or the general aviation area. Helicopters, please be careful of these big poles when you lift off or land. But it's a beautiful scene. And there we are looking out towards the port. So you look a couple of churches that you see here. One little cruise ship coming in and this one has got its engines going, get ready to go out. This does actually leave the harbour. And there are numerous other little boats and um, Yachts are going around under their own steam, leaving wakes everywhere. Lots for you to explore and discover here. And just a quick look at some of the buildings here. You can see how nicely modelled they are and just how nice they look in the, uh, the rising sun, as it were. And there's a quick shot looking down onto the harbour. There you can see both cruise ships underway. And again, they're leaving the wake. Um, it's, it's just really, really nicely done. I love it. Okay, so just after 9am and there's the airport. 
<clears throat> and the terminal area here as you can see here's runway 34 and the terrain around it which has been nicely reformed they've got rid of all the little issues um, and everything works so time to wrap this review up. I apologise for the length of it. In fact, no, I don't apologise for the length of the review. There's so much to see, which you needed to see if you wanted to see just how good this is and just what's per possible in this simulator with the right people doing the development for it. Do I like it? Yeah, of course I do. It's fantastic. One of, uh, one of the best small sceneries I've seen for a while. I say small because it's not anything like Beijing or anything like that. But um, I've left a significant amount of things for you to discover, lots of things that I haven't looked at, but I hope this has given you a taste of just how good um, this product is and just how good the developers are when they get to town on something they really do. The, the workmanship, the development, the attention to detail, the atmosphere in this, you know, this product is just um, immense, absolutely wonderful. Uh, big question, do I think it's worth the money? Yeah, I'd pay 30 euros for this. You know, the amount of work and effort that's gone into it, they have modelled everything in detail, right down to the smallest sign that sits in the grass and right up to the biggest building and even the buildings which aren't even used. The uh, modelling is fantastic. The work that must have been done with some of these here around, I mean, this must have taken a huge amount of time. So do I think it's worth the, the price? Sim market's quoting just under 24 euros, including BAT and tax, by the way. Yeah, it's more than worth it. And it sets a standard, um, which I hope many other developers are aspiring to. In fact, indeed they are, because I've done a lot of reviews and I've seen it. So there you go. Corfu, Ionis Capitias Airport, Lima Golf, Kilo Romeo. The payware version by Fly Tampa, who we all know and love. Version 1.01, this is an update from the original release. Download is 2 gigabytes and it installs two folders installed into your community folder, totaling around 6.1 gigs. It's available from Sim Market, prices include tax, and it's available from Fly Tampa directly at flytampa.org, and their prices are not shown with tax until you make your purchase. Um, the most I can see here, as I say, just under 24 euros at Sim Market for this product is great, absolutely great. It's a beautiful scenery, a beautiful product. I look forward to everything Fly Tampa does. I bought this straight away. I wasn't given this um, I, or sent it for review. I bought it and paid for it, and I have no regrets about doing that. So it's out on um, Sim Market and FlyTampa.org at the moment for the PC only. And we have to wait to see whether it will be released from it for Xbox. Um, and since Fly Tampa have um, a partnership with Orbix, expect it to appear on the Orbix website at some point. Be interesting to see their prices. So thanks for joining me. This is Lee, your virtual airline pilot, wrapping up another review. Corfu International Airport in Greece. What a fantastic product. No regrets at all about buying it. Thoroughly recommend it. Thanks for joining me and staying with the review. I hope it um, has given you some idea about um, whether or not uh, you want to purchase this or not. All I can tell you is that it is really, really well modelled. Um, this will run very nicely even on mid-end PCs because of the, the, the skill that's been used in modelling everything. So it runs really fluidly. I'd be surprised if anybody has any frame rate issues with this scenery. However, that's just my um, thoughts on it. Thank you again for joining me. I will see you in the next review. I'm hoping to get another review out this week. We're going to be look at the new float helicopter release from Fly Inside. And I hope to try and get a video out on the new latest update to the Kuwait and Kuwait City freeware scenery that's been released on FlightSim.to. So you guys have a good week. This is Lee saying bye for now. I'll see you in the next video. Take care now. Bye-bye.